Welcome back to the channel. So this is a bit of a sad day because it has been two months since I got the R8, which means that it is about time that I actually handed back the keys and gave it back to them. But over the last eight weeks, which do you know what? This summer has gone so quickly. Like I thought eight weeks, loads of time, gonna, you know, <clears throat> spend all this time driving the car, but actually my life has completely taken over. And with in between presenting and doing Drift Queen, I actually haven't been able to drive many cars that much over the last sort of eight weeks. So apologies for getting this video out late to you guys. But you know what? I've got some errands to run today and I want to kind of do like a summary review of what it's been like to live with a supercar for the last two months because uh, it's been amazing and expensive, but also really interesting. You know, it's a very good experience to be able to really get to know what it's like having one of these machines. So I'm gonna go get the car, take you guys on a day out with me because I've gotta run a couple errands, pick some stuff up, which will be quite funny. I'm looking forward to seeing if it will fit in the car. And yeah, basically telling you all my thoughts on what it's been like to drive an R8 for the last two months. Jokes that you guys catch me coming out of yet another petrol station. I've been keeping a, a stash of all of these sort of, ooh, I was gonna add up uh, when I got to the end of having this car for two months, but you know what? Uh, I did a bit of quick maths looking at my bank statement. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's well over 1200 quid. But you know what? I kind of knew that was gonna be par for the course when I picked this thing up because it is after all 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10. And plus when you like doing kind of first gear challenge, which is around town sort of five seven to six thousand rpm it sounds absolutely the tits so i kind of made my bed and i'm now lying in it um you know fuel economy if you drive it conservatively and you're on a run is about 20 20 to 21 miles per gallon so about half of the course i think really i mean i was just so like okay about it because i knew that it was going to be like that but it did remind me that for me someone who lives in central london like this car is not ideal for me it's as i'm on the way to get now i need to pick up a lip spoiler for my s15 because we've got the kit all fitted and it's just missing that extra little lip at the back to give it because the front is so wide and aggressive i need to go pick this up so where how this is going to fit in here i don't know which is kind of my other point um after living with it for two months it's got space, but for the things that I do, it's not really, really ideal, to be honest. Um, what else did I sort of find? London, this. Unless you're kind of a posy person, which, honestly, guys, like, it's not for me. Like, I like having a classic car just because it's like people appreciate the car. It's like, um, you know, people just enjoy seeing it. They've always got a smile on their face when they see the E21. Uh, this is very much like, eh, yes, darling, darling, look at me. Um, which I kind of enjoyed for like the first week and then I realised if you're doing anything in the car at all, be it weird, picking your nose, anything like that, there's always someone watching. Like always. I think I got caught a couple times just like either doing something strange or, or indeed picking my nose. So if you're about that life, like this car totally suits you. Oh, it's copper. Yeah, 100%. Um, width restrictors in this thing was an absolutely anxiety fest. Uh, it's wide and it's low, but at least the wheels are quite like high in the arches. So if you went over bumps and things, like it wasn't so bad. But width restrictors were like, I was just like, oh my God, every time I went through. Thankfully, and I will give you a walk around of the car when I get out, I'm gonna be handed this baby back with four perfect wheels, which is nothing short of a Christmas miracle because there was a few times when I was like, that's it. I'm just gonna have to remortgage my flat if I had a mortgage on it. But you know what I mean, like to get these all uh, diamond cut again, but we survived. Um, I think to be honest, this thing is like an ideal second car. Like you need to have like a daily yoke that you will be able to put everything in, run around and not worry about. Cause again, with the spec, it's definitely down to the spec on this, like the white leather. Uh, I was just, I. Like I was always trying to keep it clean and it was like I don't know whether I'm just a mucky pup or something or but just so much transfer I wear a lot of black and I felt that a 
lot of the transfer was like coming off my jeans and things like that. But you know what? Like I don't want to say that, that this car is in any way bad because it's not. It's absolutely insane. Like it's incredible. Like to have something like this in this day and age where you know big engines are always being compressed all the time. The V6 turbos are becoming like the engine to have. And when you've got that sort of like under your front, like your right foot, like it's incredible. I'm gonna miss so much that noise of being able to just spank it for like just a second because that's the other thing. God, I'm like coming out with all these points now. This car has definitely taught me to be a more responsible driver because I'm so used to driving smaller engine cars, so you're always kind of driving them more on the limit. That's a, and that's sort of like where the fun is at because you're always like ah, screaming around, having a crack. And then when you get into this, it's suddenly the limit is so far away that you then at the slightest touch of the throttle you can be flying all of a sudden so i just decided you know it just made me a more responsible driver i was suddenly like taking it easy so many more places and it became a more chilled experience driving okay just made it to epr racing now pick up this lip spoiler and yeah it'll fit it'll fit this guy's obviously got his own s15 here as well very nice so how big is it? Ah, uh, easy streets. That'll fit in. Bit of bubble wrap, sure will be fine. This is cool though, this is your car? Yeah. What engine is it running? SR20. That's an SR20. Same as mine. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. More of a toy. Bit of a toy. Oh, awesome. Convertible. Yeah, I was gonna say, because I didn't recognize this. I was like, what, yeah, it's a what's going on here? Ah, have the granddad spec cushions as well. That's part of the. That's her for one. She's driving it. She needed that. Bless her. Yeah, she's only like five foot two. So. Aww, cute. Oh god, we're blowing out on there. Awesome. Right, let's get this thing loaded up. Uh, who doesn't love a shop dog? Hello. Hello. Ooh. My guard, I shoot my bike. She your guard dog, yeah. yeah. She will lick you to death. She looks really fierce. Yeah, she will lick you to death, hundred percent. Oh. oh yeah right let's move the crisps out of the way first put that in my bag let's put the seat back oh that's as far back as it goes right that's a uh, test fitter that'll be fine yeah she in okay maybe maybe not <laughs> maybe. oh really okay one sec maybe not <laughs> She in? Yeah. Look at that. It's automatic, so you don't need to change here. Practical. Fits like a dream. Perfect. Just fit. Just, yeah, that, that'll be fine. <laughs> okay, so we are fitted in. Actually, that's better than I thought it would. So at least we know now we can fit a full S15 spoiler in here. See, she's useful. But it is kind of a compromise. I'm just enjoying my last sort of couple of days with the car because it's like I know I'm gonna really miss it. You, it's one of those things like you never really know what you had until it was gone. Uh, all systems go, lads. I can't wait for you to see. Bye, bye, bye. Like, I can't wait for you to see the series when it comes out. Like it has been an absolutely mental journey and kept me so busy over this summer. Like I have been non-stop, which is kind of one of the like things that I felt sad about was that I haven't been able to drive the car as much as I maybe wanted to, but you know what? Work always kind of is gonna have to come first because that's what pays the bills. Pays the bills to put the fuel in the car. Right, onwards to the next destination. Uh, I've loved being able to start a V10 up in the mornings. That cold start with this thing is definitely what I'm going to really miss. You know, hitting that start button and just being like, oh, getting that sort of like shiver down your spine as you hear the noise I and mean, even when you're in the car park where you're just doing a little flex and you just start it up and you see everyone sort of look over and you're like oh yeah sorry lads that's uh that would be me i know i talked a lot about the perception on the road of other people the way they were driving around me it did get on my nerves a little bit but at the end of the day i'm here to enjoy the car for what it is and like some of loads of you guys got in touch on the in the comments of that video saying how you'd had similar experiences so i just know it's not it's not me it's just a general British road attitude thing um, but seeing that like it's not enough to not to put you off buying one of these like I think if you've got the, the money to get one you should you know fuck what anyone else thinks like absolutely like you enjoy your money and believe me this thing has so many 
characteristics which make it like a wonderful second car. I wouldn't say, even though I've used it daily, I would just want to use it as a daily car. You know when I took it up to Scotland and I managed to, you know, take it out on a proper run and enjoy it. What, like sweeping roads, really get to experience the gearbox going up and down it and actually using the dynamic and just feeling the way this car handles because I got, I jumped into one of my friend's cars, which is, <clears throat> it was another brand that I'm not going to mention, but slightly, uh, slightly cheaper. And the, you, you, you forget the build quality of Audis, like everything is sturdy, everything is built really, really well. It feels solid. And that is something to definitely be aware of, is like how good something like this is. I know it's not, is it technically a supercar? Who knows? Uh, it's like a sports car. So sports car, supercar, whatever. It's built incredibly well. And everything is like top notch on it can be in comparison to a lot of cars on the market but even the ones that are up this end of the bracket you'd be surprised um but that's the thing i've always liked about audi there's a real solid brand and they have great build quality one thing again it's a personal subjective point of view is the fact that what really got to me is like, you want to if you're going to have this car as a second car you want to go out and enjoy it so you might want to have a passenger with you and your passenger can't actually interact with the driving experience because it's all directed towards the driver. Everything is on the screen um, here with sort of the digital cockpit in front of you, which means there's no screen here for them to sort of like fiddle around with songs and stuff. They're just kind of guessing using the buttons here. And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to use the Apple CarPlay. Or they're picking my phone up to go on Spotify and the Apple CarPlay then switches the map off. And it's just like, oh, it'd just be so much easier if there was a, an interface in the middle. But I, you know, again, that's just sort of something you get to learn about the car as you have it for a little bit of time like actually using apple carplay is a godsend i i believe that every car should have it now because it just makes everything so much easier you can just plug and play and you've got all your favorite apps on there like all of us live on spotify and ways realistically so or google maps and the if you can have that just straight up as you have it on your phone it just makes it so much easier you're not messing around with trying to you know input little things into a completely different Yep, looks about right. Okay, so this is suit one. You know what, every race suit seems to be like massively baggy. Like it doesn't have much shape. It's not like my leathers where everything sort of like fits really nicely. Oh, we have another option. <laughs> but yeah, no, I was just saying that women's, like the, just the men's suits kind of fit really. I don't know, I feel like I'm wearing a big baby grow, if you will. Okay, this is definitely a better fit. Ooh, it might even look like I know what I'm doing. Mm, mm, I don't like that though. <laughs> okay, I've gone for a slight change of pace. I've gone now, I think, for this grey one because all will be revealed as to why I'm picking grey, but yeah, I quite like this. I'm having like a little private shopping experience there because it's just me and the lovely shop assistant, so I've got the whole place myself, so I'm just currently running around in my old socks. I think I look like a Power Ranger. <laughs> okay, so that is another thing crossed off the list. Thanks for all you have. You've no been worry. great. Super easy, ran in, got a suit, got some gloves, got some boots, ran out. Probably been here about what? All 17 minutes? That's efficiency, lads. Kit all sorted, that's all in there. I just had a call from my daddy as well, which means I get to take the car to see him for one last time. Also, that is shocking parking, Rebecca. Hello. Hello, baby doll. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> last time you're gonna see the R8, are you sad? Oh, is it going back? It is indeedy. Has that been all those weeks? I know, eight weeks already, can eight you believe weeks. it? Right, let's have a go coffee and catch up. Let's no, get coffee. Coffee time. You're in, you're in the shot, there you are. I'm in shot. You're in shot, okay. Well, anyway, as we were talking about the R8 over a coffee. Yeah. I think, for me, it's an amazing car. Like, as a machine, it's incredible, isn't it? Incredible thing. I mean, it's so, so powerful and good looking. Uh, it's amazing. But for an everyday vehicle, it doesn't really suit my lifestyle. Because <laughs> like, oh, I'm always in and out, here, car. there, everywhere. Like, yeah. just constantly trying to, like, I don't know, living with it, it's like a different, it's a different vibe. Yeah, I think having a car like that in central London 
Uh, I think you do really, really well with it, but it's, um, I think it's possibly not suited to your lifestyle. And uh, so it's a wonderful thing, but there you are. But I think now that means we can, well, I reckon more of a hot hatch type thing or like a saloon car is for me. Yeah. Yeah, something that's a bit easier to live with. Still got performance. Obviously, it's not going to have the blinding performance of that car because it is a supercar. But I think something which is more practical would probably be um, what you need. Then, but if I get an M3, that means I can take you out and like do skids with it. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd love it. I don't. <laughs> but at least we've got something fun. Yeah, you just like tap, tap, tap. But anyway, um, yeah, bye car. Well, it's a lovely car and and it's really nice you've looked after it very well and i look all four corners straight. beautiful everything's there are you proud of me it's a lovely color i am proud of you i think it's something i've never had a car like this and uh, all my cars have tended to be a bit more angular <laughs> more upright or just old jalopies <laughs> well i'm going to come see you next week anyway because i've got the new addition coming into the garage well actually it's already arrived but we'll talk about that in the next video but okay. thanks to everyone that's watching and yeah, stay tuned for the next edition to my garage. Dad, say bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.